Rishus Kol Kol Kodesh, Hashemim, Haroyim. We have entered the Zman of Mishunich Nesador Marbin B'Simcha. And people, if you go in the streets, you see people dancing in the streets, and there's joyous music in the streets. Some people think if you will drink a little bit more, that's not Simcha. That's Gilo, that's Reno, that's Ditzel, that's Chedvo. That's ecstasy, that's joy. Marbin B'Simcha means we should increase our comfortable feeling of satisfaction, inner happiness. Probably the biggest feeling of inner happiness and comfort is if we know we're not alone. The Chodesh of Ador is where we found HaKadosh Baruch Hu behind the curtain. We saw it was all HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We were never alone, and we are never alone. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is forever with us. And that's the Marbin B'Simcha of Ador. And to illustrate this, in the few moments that we have, I want to share with you a Vilna Goy. The Medrash tells us, Gemara in Megillah, that Mordechai at Sadiq was looking to see where is this going to lead? Are we going to have Yeshua? And he met three yeshiva bachar. Here was Zoycha to be speaking in the beautiful, great yeshiva Sha'alvin, where so much Torah is learned by Hasmada and with the love of Hashem. That's where the key to Yeshua comes. The Cherus comes from Torah. Our Geula will come from Torah, and Mordechai Atzadik went to the Bnei Torah. He met three yeshiva children. And he asked them, Psoikli Psukecho, individually, each one, what did you learn today? And the first one said, I learned, Don't be afraid of a sudden fear that comes upon you. From the screams of Roshoyim, if, if they were to come. That's the first Pasuk that I hear from the first child. He asked the second child, What Pasuk did you learn today? And the child said, Utsu Eitzo. They had an idea, Visu Far. But it disappeared, it dissipated. Dabru Dovar, they spoke words, Veloyakum. The words didn't stand. Ki imanu keel, because HaKadosh Baruch was with us. And then he turned to the third yeshiva child. Tell me your pasuk. In my class we learned. Va'adzikna aniu, HaKadosh Baruch says until old age, I am HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Va'adzikna aniu, HaKadosh Until old age, I can carry, I will carry the load. Aniu, sisi, I made it all. Va'aniu, so I will carry it. I can shoulder it, and I will save. Right away, Mordechai Atzadik was so excited. It says the Vulna Goyim. Why did Hakadosh Baruch Hu send him these three psukim that gave him the security of knowing we are not alone? Hakadosh Baruch Hu was going to be with us through this, and we're going to persevere. We're going to continue and resiliently rise up again. Says it on the goings of of Racha, these are three psukim about our encounters with Amalek. And they're in the Siddur after Aleinu every day. The first was after the Petira, the first was, excuse me, Pachat Pisayim, after the Tzias Mitzrayim. When all of a sudden, the entire world was afraid of us. Everybody was, st- was almost paralyzed like a stone from fear of Klav Yisrael. And Amalek shocked us. They weren't afraid. They came to attack us. And the Posik tells us, Don't be afraid. There's one fear on this earth, Hashem. If the screams of Rashaim come, if we look up and we understand the message of Moshe Rabbeinu's hands, that it's all turning towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu does anything for his children, for B'ni B'chayri Yisrael. And we didn't lose a life in that battle. Only Amalek lost lives. The second attempt, Amalek realized that we won that battle because we dove into Hashem. And Amalek had an idea in Parshas Kukas after the Petira of Aaron HaKoyen that Amon had disappeared. The cloud of protection had disappeared. It was there in the merit of Aaron HaKoyen. Now he was gone. And until Moshe Rabbeinu brought it back with his Zechusim, it had disappeared. The Kanani came to attack us. It wasn't Kanani, says Rashi. It was Amalek. But they were afraid we would daven, that Amalek should be destroyed. Like we did when Moshe Rabbeinu lifted up his hands, we daven to Hashem. They didn't want us to be able to daven correctly. So they disguised themselves. They disguised themselves as people from Kanaan. And that was their plan. Probably the Yidin will daven. 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu save us from Canaan. And we're Amalek. It'll be a, a, a tefillah which is misplaced. Says the Pasuk, Utsu Eitzah, they had such an interesting idea, this so far. But it was dissipated, because we were confused. We said, they look like Canaan. They speak like Amalek. You know what? We're going to dive in an ambiguous tefillah. Hashem, we don't know who they are. If you'll give this nation in our hands, what a tefillah. And it worked. Dabru Dover Vilayakum. They spoke language. And they wanted to fool us. It didn't work, it didn't help. Ki imanu kel, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with us. Dabru Dover Vilayakum. They spoke the language of the, of the uh, Kenan. It didn't work, because the Abish is with us. And the third was about the time of Haman HaRosha. Haman's taina was, his argument was, Hashem is old. He was so excited with Ador, because Moshe Rabbeinu was nifter in Ador. Ah, he was also born in Ador. Ah, it didn't mean anything to him, because the Petira was full of Nisan. Moshe Rabbeinu was youthful, like Kosa Inilay Nosleicha. He was youthful. He, nobody could know where his kever was. He died in Mrs. Nashiko. His birth wasn't miraculous. He was a seventh-month baby. They live. His mother put him in a, in, a, in a basket that was smeared with tar. So water didn't get in, so he didn't drown. Basya came to bathe and found him. That's normal. There were no miracles with his birth. Haman wasn't afraid of his birth. Haman was more interested in his death because after the Petira of Moshe Rabbeinu, there were never so many Nisim as there had been with his Petira and during his lifetime. So Haman's excitement of Ador was it's a month of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's aging. He doesn't do miracles anymore. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Oh, you don't think birth is a miracle? You don't think if a seventh-month baby lives, it's a miracle? You don't think if water is held back by tar, it's a miracle? You don't think if on this particular day, Basya Baspare goes to bathe and finds the baby, it's a miracle? You will die, Haman, in the hands of a series of invisible miracles. A drunken king who kills his wife. Well, that's normal. He's a drunk. What do you expect from a drunken person? He needs another wife. He takes a beautiful Esther. That's normal. A, a chain of things that you don't think are miracles, that's where Haman's going to fall. I'm the same way here, there's no old age. Till forever I will carry the load. I made it all. I'll carry it. I will shoulder it. And I will save them. So we shouldn't get lost in the drink of Purim. We shouldn't get lost in the it, it, dancing is wonderful, but we should remember what Simcha is. Marvin Besimcha is that calm, beautiful feeling. Hakadosh Baruch Hu is always here. We're never alone, no matter what's going on in our lives. We can feel that, that security, that inner happiness. And the biggest Simcha is if we live with Hashem and we do what's right and we can go to sleep every night and say, I lived a good day. May we all be Zoycha to improve our lives so that. Our companionship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is one of our consciousness of that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with me. I should do things that make HaKadosh Baruch Hu happy. And then we'll always feel secure and happy ourselves. And our whole life will be a series of Marvin Masuch.